how can your doctor tell if you have fibroids? In other words, what are the methods that we currently have available to effectively diagnose fibroids? Hello, welcome back. My name is Dr. Sylvia and this is Ask Away Health, the channel where we provide you with clarity and direction about everything medical. Please subscribe to my channel and when you do, click that notification bell so that every time we publish new videos, we tend to be once a week on Saturdays, you'll be amongst the first people to know. So today we're talking about how fibroids can be diagnosed. Let's get straight into it. So in our series on fibroids, we've been looking at what are fibroids, the symptoms, the types, the causes, and many frequently asked, asked questions that women come up with about fibroids. Because fibroids, as we know, they are benign growths in the uterus, but they're very common, happening in between 30 to 40% of women. They cause symptoms that can be very distressing, so it's important that they are diagnosed as quickly as possible so you can start the most effective treatment available. And that's why we're looking at this video topic today. What exactly are the methods that we use to diagnose fibroids? When a woman visits her doctor to complain about possible symptoms of fibroids like very heavy painful periods or irregular bleeding, the first thing that the doctor will do apart from talking to you and getting as much of the information about your symptoms as possible is to carry out a general examination, they will examine your abdomen and pelvis and likely perform an intimate examination. The intimate examination is also known as an internal examination and it's one where the doctor would like to examine the vagina, the womb, that is the neck of the womb, to be able to identify different aspects and determine whether it's a healthy womb or whether there are any abnormalities that may be re uh, related to the, to the symptoms that you've presented with. Now, an internal examination should not be an uncomfortable examination. It should be fairly straightforward. The doctor might need to examine with the fingers or use some um, instruments, for example, a speculum, to actually look into the um, vaginal space and see the neck of the womb. Now, don't forget you should and you can ask for a chaperone to be with you during your examination, during your internal examination. Now sometimes by performing an internal examination a doctor may be able to assess and detect or suspect that a woman has fibroids. This for example can be if the woman is quite slim and if, the, if she has very large fibroids so that when you're carrying out the examination you can actually feel the bulkiness of the uterus and this suggests the presence of fibroids. But that's not really enough because there are other things that might cause a, womb, a, a swollen womb or an enlarged womb, for example, pregnancy or malignancy, cancer of other parts of the body or other organs within the abdomen, abdomen and pelvis, like the ovaries um, or the bladder. So we need to identify what exactly is causing this lump. So we do need some more um, examination or tests to work out what's definitely going on. Now, there are other tests that a doctor will need to do if a woman presents with symptoms of fibroids, for example, anemia, if she has low blood levels, then a woman will need to have a blood test done. If she presents with symptoms that indicate a problem with the urinary system, the doctor might want to do a urine test. And of course, we've talked about pregnancy. So it might be if somebody presents with irregular um, pattern of bleeding or um, an unexplained lump, one of the things that you might want to do is a pregnancy test. So we've got to the stage where we suspect that there's something going on within the womb or within the pelvic cavity. One of the commonly used and most valuable ways of detecting a woman has fibroids without surgery is by having an ultrasound scan. Ultrasound imaging is a non-invasive test or method that doctors can use to diagnose medical conditions. An ultrasound imaging test uses, uses sound waves to make pictures of the internal organs or the inside of the body. So not only can it show internal organs, it can show detail. For example, in a pregnant woman, it can actually show the baby's brain or the baby's own internal organs as well. Now, when we say that ultrasound is non-invasive, we mean it's an approach that does not invade the body cavities, such as happens during surgery, or in some procedures, for example, endoscopy, where you have a tube with a little camera that goes into the bowel or into the, um, the stomach, any part of the gastrointestinal system to identify problems. Ultrasound is very simple without it, and the test is conducted without entering the body's cavities. In addition to being a non-invasive test, it is also safe and does not use ionizing radiation, which is of course why it can be used in a woman who is pregnant. It does not cause any harm to the mother or to the baby. 
in the past in one of our videos on fibroids we've talked about we've talked about the effect of hormones particularly estrogen and progesterone on development of fibroids so here's a question for you what have you heard about using hormone blood tests to diagnose fibroids should be possible shouldn't it tell me what you think i'd love to see your responses down below in the comment section but let's talk a little bit more about ultrasound scanning so ultrasound scanning is also known as sonography or ultrasound imaging and, be, and can be carried out in almost any part of the body. In ultrasound scanning, a small probe called a transducer is used with a gel that's applied over the surface of the, the body, that is the skin. And as I said earlier, sound waves are produced which are used to make a picture of the internal organs and displays on the computer. Now, because ultrasound images are conducted in real time, Apart from showing you the structure of an organ, they can also show you movement within the organ. So this can be helpful in showing you blood flow through the organs. It can help in looking at structures within the womb. So you know we've talked about the different types of fibroids. So with ultrasound scanning, you can actually identify intramural fibroids, for example, or submucosal fibroids, or fibroids along the outside of the, um, of the womb cavity. So that's a brief look at how ultrasound scans work and how they can be used in detecting fibroids. At the moment, they are the most effective way outside of surgery to identify and confirm that there are fibroids present within a woman. Now, there are other types of imaging that can be conducted for fibroids. Magnetic resonance imaging is a type of imaging that shows the inside of a body again without invading the body cavities. In this case, magnetic waves are used as well as radio waves to create images about the internal structures within the body and transmute onto a computer. During an MRI scan, you lie on a table which slides into a noisy tunnel shaped machine. Now, doing an MRI scan can take quite a long time, but it's really important that you stay very still and it is painless so there are no concerns about causing or inflicting any distress apart from the very noisy environment some people may um, some people who are claustrophobic may have problems with having the scan done but like i said it is non-invasive and can be used by some people who want to study closely the type of fibroids a woman has in order to carry out surgery. So it may be used for some complex fibroids, not necessarily just to diagnose, because like we said, ultrasounds can easily do that. But if somebody has some fibroids that are located in an, um, a, a complex location or have a particularly unusual blood supply, an MRI might be useful to try and work out how best to approach the surgical intervention that that person requires. So how can we diagnose fibroids? An ultrasound, simple, painless, non-invasive, valuable tool that can be used to quickly detect fibroids and then take and then get a woman onto the next stage of finding the most effective treatment that's required for managing the condition. Now that we've talked about how to detect and diagnose fibroids, watch out for the next few videos coming along in this same series. We're talking about the natural treatments of fibroids, we're looking at medical and surgical treatments, and what about uterine atrioembolization? How does that work and how effective is it? Stay tuned to the channel. If you've liked this video, leave a comment for me down below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that bell once you've done so. Also, please feel free to share this video with somebody who you think it might, it might help. And I've also put a link in the descriptions to our online platform, Ask Away Health. You can subscribe and join our lovely growing community of people who receive newsletters and infograms about helpful information. It's a great place to be if you want to be kept health aware and, about, and, and learn about different medical conditions. That's it for today, folks. Thanks for listening and see you in the next one.